Welcome back to our series of short lectures, Statistics for Proteomics. The last time we discussed estimating statistical significance for differential protein abundance. And today we'll continue with a related topic, which is estimating the significance of functional enrichment. To recapitulate from the previous lecture, we finished by summarizing some of the challenges in estimating statistical significance for differential protein abundance, uh, which is commonly displayed as volcano plots. And specifically, we emphasize that obtaining independent measurements can be that are required for estimating statistical significance can be challenging. And we discussed the limitations of thresholding proteins and determining uh, those that are significant and those that are not, and the inherent oversimplification of, of this approach of thresholding. Nonetheless, one commonly applied method to identifying functional enrichment is precisely based on using the hits from volcano plots or from differential uh, protein abundance analysis. Uh, and this approach is nicely exemplified with a tool known as Gotham Finder that was developed originally for analyzing genomics data from DNA microarrays at the beginning of 2000s. And in this, with this approach, one can simply determine using the hypergeometric distribution the probability of seeing the observed number of, of proteins from a particular set within the hits by chance alone. Let's say you observe 10 ribosomal proteins within the set of proteins identified to be significantly uh, upregulated. And given the total number of hits and using the hypergeometric distribution, you can compute the p-value for how significant that is. Uh, this approach is indeed successful in determining significance, but has a number of downsides that they have summarized here to the right. And in particular, many of its implementations ignore the quantitative values in the sense that once a protein is considered to be within the set of upregulated proteins or downregulated proteins, we no longer use information about the magnitude of its change or the significance. Uh, similarly, this analysis just estimates statistical significance for the enrichment, but usually doesn't estimate the effect size, meaning by how much, how overexpressed or uh, are the, the proteins or to what extent they're downregulated. Uh, it inherits all of the challenges uh, in determining hits or significant proteins, uh, namely the challenges of obtaining independent measurements and might have low statistical power, particularly in the case where many proteins from a pathway are just a little bit below the threshold. In such case, we would fail to identify the pathway as being significantly regulated. There are many alternative approaches that have been summarized in large number of papers and software packages. Um, here I have uh, provided example of one very well-known and influential paper from mid 2000s, uh, gene set enrichment analysis that implements an alternative approach to, to performing this analysis. And instead of summarizing all of these different instantiations, I would just introduce uh, conceptually uh, another approach that doesn't require to pre-compute uh, statistically uh, significant differentially regulated proteins or RNAs before one can look for functional enrichment. And the idea is very, very similar, is very, very simple. The idea is simply to compare the distribution of quantitative values for all proteins, as here shown in the blood distribution, to the distribution of quantitative values for a particular set of proteins, for example, for ribosomal proteins, as shown in the blue distribution, or for proteins functioning in autophagy, as shown with the red distribution. And then we can simply compare those distributions using uh, any test that we want that is suitable to uh, the particular problem of uh, interest. 
I have intentionally used here the vague term value because I want to emphasize that value can be anything. It doesn't have to be just protein abundance or fold change. It can be slope from a regression uh, computed across time series or computed in a dose response curve. It can be correlations of the protein to, to the pro, of the proteins to a functional phenotype, to fitness effects. It might be the loadings of a principal component or any other numerical metric of interest that uh, comes out from your analysis can be used within this very flexible framework to estimate whether that metric shows a systematic and significant difference across different set of functionally related proteins. As previously, and as with any case of uh, statistical significance analysis, the degree of dependence or independence in, of the individual data points is very important to be taken into account when computing significance. Uh, and in this case, we're looking for systematic errors uh, that might be correlated, that might be dependent between different proteins that are part of a, of a functionally coherent set of proteins. And, and those errors tend to be less common than the systematic errors in replicate analysis, but nonetheless they exist. And here I have summarized a couple of examples of such errors that might be shared across a set of proteins. For example, the proteins might be particularly hydrophilic and uh, artifacts during the chromatography or during sample cleanup, for example, with stage tip, might result in preferential loss of hydrophilic peptides coming from hydrophilic proteins and might affect all of the proteins from that particular uh, protein set. Uh, similarly, there might be a bias in extracting organelles or protein complexes from the cell, which would appear as a shared um, error for all proteins in, in the set of proteins and, and, uh, and therefore will render individual data points less independent and less suitable for uh, the statistical analysis that we need. Nonetheless, the sources of biases that are shared across different proteins tend to be fewer and less common than uh, usually are between replicate analyses. Um, we already discussed that uh, the, the crux of computing statistical significance in this case boils down to comparing distributions. The distributions can be compared either by using parametric or non-parametric tests. Uh, parametric tests include t-test and ANOVA. They tend to be more powerful, but also make more assumptions about the data that may not be fulfilled. One of the advantages of gene set enrichment analysis, protein set enrichment analysis as compared to just differential protein abundance analysis is that there tend to be more data points because there are more proteins within a, fun within a functional set oftentimes. And therefore we can use more readily non-parametric tests and have sufficient data to compensate for their lower statistical power because these methods that make fewer assumptions generally require more data and are therefore, therefore tend to be more applicable with protein site enrichment analysis than the 